So, we are talking about adders, full adders, half adder, full adder, subtractor, half subtractor, full subtractor. How a subtractor can be used, how an adder can be used in a subtractor because of two's complement addition. We also talked about 4 bit adders and 4 bit adder subtractor, how a 4 bit adder can be used as an adder or a sub and a subtractor at the same time. <laughs> Today I am going to talk about BCD adder because as I said, BCD is the preferred form for our inputs. Whenever I am using a computer or a calculator, we like to give numbers in decimal format. So, the number gets converted into what is known as a BCD because it has to be represented in a binary format. So, the number gets converted to binary, but the difference is after 9, 0 to 9, 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, after 9, in binary, it becomes 1, 0, 1, 0 corresponding to tan, but you cannot have it because tan is 2 digits. So, I want to have only 9, 0 to 9 decimal. So, if you want to represent a number like 15 decimal, it will be represented as 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1. So, this is BCD representation of 15, whereas a binary representation of 15 would be addition process using a 4 bit adder, 4 bit adder, the adder does not know you want a BCD or the adder does not know your inputs are BCD. So, it gives you a binary value which is more than 9 which is 1 0 1 0 etcetera. It is up to us to convert it into BCD format for displaying the result if you want to or if you want to store the result or if you want to display the result, you would like to have BCD format. So, let us look at this. Now, I have, I am now having, there is no need for a carry in, but you will have a carry in as an input. Now, now, if you do the, the numbers will be 0, 0, 0, the sum will be 3, B 2, I mean S 3, S 2, S 1, S 0, 4 bits starting from 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, carry will be 0, so 4 up to 9 and then it will continue 10, 11, so 4 up to 15. 15 would be 1, 1, 1, 1. This is the sum of this full adder. Sum of this full adder. Along with the value, whatever the number A and B. Now we are going to feed A and B as B, C, D numbers. We know that they are not going to exceed 9. This will not exceed 9. This will not exceed 9. So, when the numbers are like this, the result can be 4 bit sum and a 1 bit carry. So, it can come go anywhere from 0 to 16 and beyond also. Beyond 16 what will happen is it will again fold back and become 1, carry becomes 1, 
zero, 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 zero. This will be 16. 18. 19. We are not interested in numbers more than this because we are only adding two decimal digits. Number can be only 18 because each one can be only 9. 9 plus 9 is 18, but we have the provision for 19. So, we have 19 as a maximum. So, this is this is what it is going to be like. Now, I want this to be converted into up to 9, there is no problem. This is what is the sum that is available in the BCD adder, but I want the sum in the BCD adder as BCD sum should be. That means I want the sum as a binary coded decimal number. I do not want the sum as the binary number, this is binary sum, but I want this number to be converted into BCD numbers. So, up to 9, there is no problem. So, we will call it uh, S3, S2, S1 again. Or if you want, you can call this. To distinguish, to differentiate from here to here, we will put a star here. There is a BCD number. And carry will be also, we will call it carry. Now, again from 0 to 9, there should be no problem. If the sum is anywhere from 0 to 9, I can straight away take this and that will be right. So, up from 0 to 9 binary BCD, I will take the binary value of the 4 bit full adder. The same thing, there is no difference between the binary and BCD up to 9, 0 to 9. Now, for this, this is 10, 1010 is a binary for 10. There is a carry 0, but I would like this to be represented as 10. I will have a 1 here starting at 0, 0, 0, 0. This will be my 10 BCD. Then I want to have 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, this will be 11 BCD, etc. up to 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, which is my 19 BCD. So, this carry will be used to represent the second digit. Because we only have one in the BCD second. See, there are two digits of binary, two digits of BCD, but the second digit is always going to be one now because I am not going to have more any number more than 19. So, this is a one, and the other number can be 0 to 9. So, either it is 0 and 0 to 9 or 1 and 0 to 9. Now, the question is. How do I convert this numbers into, how do you convert these numbers into these numbers? I have a 4 bit full adder, I have done the addition, I have the sum, I have a carry out, the numbers whose values are more than 9 up to 19 including carry, how do I convert them into 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? That is the design of a BCD adder. I asked you to read it up last time. I do not know whether you did. I also either I wanted you to read it yourself in the book or in the Google or whatever. I hope at least some of you have done it. So, what is going to happen is I am going to remove this. I will still have the 4 bit full adder, the original 4 bit full adder.
บีอันนี้อันไหนสีเงาสมยูแคนซีฟรอมเฮียร์เวอร์ดี้อีสิลีดิสิสบินารีทันไอบินารีเรปเรซเนชั่นของทันทันเรปเรซเนต์บินารีดิสิส16 in binary. So this is 10, this is 16, this is 11, this is 17, this is 15. Correspondingly, this will be uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. One followed by this is one. One, 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 one. This is I add six to this. So this is this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is 15. 15 would be 10101. One, one. one thing you can notice is this next number is 17, 16. So this will be one. So forth. We will see these numbers are the same as these numbers plus six. If I add six to all of each of these numbers, I get these numbers. So what I want to do is to convert the binary adder, four-bit binary adder. To a four-bit BCD adder is to add six to the sum of the binary adder, but I can't do this all the time. I can do it only for these values. Only if the result is more than ten, I can add six. So if the result is six, I will add six. The result is ten, I will add six. This becomes sixteen. So this is 16, it will be represented as 1, 4, 0, 0, 0. If it is 11, add 11, 6, it becomes 17. 17 will be represented as 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So I need to add 6. So I need one more 4-bit four, four binary adder, 4-bit full adder, out of which, to which I will give this, 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 and I will also have to give 6. 6 is nothing but 0, 1, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0 is 6. So to this, I add 6. So the 6 is not always added. Is added under the following conditions, three conditions. 6 is added if the original carry is 1. Carry is 1. Carry out. This carry out is 1. This is carry out of the first. The original carry, if it is 1, I had R6. If the original ca carry is not 1, but if I have these combinations, the following combinations 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, these combinations are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These six combinations and these four combinations, total of 10 combinations, I have to add 6 to the sum. Otherwise, I do not have to add 6. No. How do I do that? I can put this carry as one of the conditions. Mr. Your... Kandan, there is a lot of noise. Mr. Kandan? This is one or these two conditions. When these two are one, these two are one. 
So what are the conditions now? If C is 1, so we'll put an R gate here. Carry is one or <coughs> when the last two digits of the sum, last two bits of the sum is one. Last two bits of the sum is one means I put this and this to an AND gate. Or the last bit and the second bit are one. So these are the three conditions under which I need to add 6. If this is 1, I need 6, otherwise it is 0. So again, up to 0 to 9, this sum is same as the BCD sum. What is the problem? Problem is I want to convert a binary adder into a BCD adder. Binary adder will give results from 0 to 15. That is 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. BCD adder will give a result from 0 to 19, 0, 0 to 1, 9. Now, after 9, when the result is 10, 10 will be shown as a binary as 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, whereas I want 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is 10, 1 followed by 0. This is 11, 1 followed by 1, but this is only 1, 0, 1, 1. So, when these combinations occur from 10 to 19, I need to add 6 to this sum. And how do I add 6? I have to look at the conditions. One condition is when the carry of the original full adder is 1, I add 6. Second condition, when these two bits, the last bit and the one before of the original sum are 1, I need to add 6. The third condition, when the last bit and one second bit are 1, then I also add 6. So, these conditions are put through this hardware, 2 AND gates and 1, that OR gate gets the 1, 1. So, now the sum is going to be 1, 1, 1. This is a BCD sum. This will be the same as the C bar, C star. So, this is S, oh, S3 star, S2 star, S1 star, S0 star. These four digits will represent 0 to 9 and when it is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, again it will go from 0 to 9 with this as a 1. So, this is 0 followed by 0, so this is 0 followed by 0. 0, 1, 0, etc., 0, 9, or 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 9. So that means I have a full adder which deals with binary numbers, but I want to convert into BCD numbers because we are familiar with BCD. When you use the calculator, you punch decimal numbers, not binary numbers. When you use a computer, you punch binary numbers, I mean the, uh, b, uh, decimal numbers, not binary numbers. So you have to know how to get a BCD addition, this is what it is. That means I need 4 for, for each BCD adder, I need 2 4 bit full adders and some extra logic.
Are there any questions? If you have a question, raise your hand. Anybody has a question, raise your hand, please. We have gone a long way. We discuss uh, basic numbers, we discuss gates, we discuss Boolean algebra, quantum map, we discuss how to make simple circuits. We also talked about multiplexers, decoders, how to use them in design. We talked about parity, encoders. We talked about adders. Now, this type of adders we have been discussing, 4 bit adder, take an example of the 4 bit adder. 4 bit is only used for classroom because it is simple to understand. As I was telling the other day, some one of you asked me why only 4 bits? Nobody uses 4 bits. 4 bit is from with 4 bits I can represent 0 to 15. So, 0 to 15, another 0 to 15, total is 0 to 30. For that, I do not need a big logic, but it is only an indicative of how to design circuits. Generally, in adders, calculator, etcetera, we deal with much larger numbers. So, we have full adder. How do you get a 4-bit four, four adder? We take a full adder, 1-bit adder, 1-bit adder, connect them in series as many bits as you want. It can be 8 bits, it can be 12 bits, it can be 16 bits, 32 bits, 64 bits, 192 bits, does not matter. Okay. So, I have this series of adders, a full adder, 1 bit full adder, 2 inputs A and B, 1 carry in, 1 sum. Then we go to this carry of this, carry out goes to the carry in of the next full adder. Sum. So, you want to say this is A0, B0, sum 0, this is C minus 1, this is C1, C0, and this becomes S1, C1, A1, B1. I will do on doing it as many as I want. A n, n bits, B n, S n, C n, output C is C n, this is C n minus 1. n can be 4, n can be 2, n can be 8, n can be 16, 32. 48, even 77. Nobody prevents you from using a number of full adders, which is non 2 power man, integer power of 2. But the problem is, so each circuit has some gates. You know, how was a full adder, if you remember? This is a full adder sum. And carry was Each of these full adders has this inside. Now, that means each gate is small. Nowadays, they are very fast. Real estate technology has advanced so much. 
we are talking about nanosecond delay, even picosecond delay, even less than picosecond delay, because that is why you are able to get computers which work in gigahertz. You say I have Pentium 3.3 gigahertz, 3.2 gigahertz. A gigahertz is 1 gigahertz is 1 nanosecond, 2 gigahertz is 0.5 nanoseconds. So, we are talking about nanoseconds, sub nanoseconds, picoseconds and all that. Even then, there is a finite delay with each gate. When a signal is applied to A, B, the sum appears after a small time. Earlier it was milliseconds, then microseconds, then nanoseconds, today is less than nanosecond, picosecond less than picosecond, but still there is a delay. Same thing here. I give A, B and C in, These, there are two levels of gates, these are two gates, these are two gates, what I mean by two gates is two levels, from here it has to go here and then the sum has to come. In this case here it has to go from here, here it has to go to here, here. but these are exclusive or gates, XR gates a little more delay than AND and R. So, this may be slightly more than this, does not matter, but still there is a delay. Now, if I now connect this like this, full ladder 1, feeding to full ladder 2, feeding to full ladder 3, feeding to full ladder 4, feeding to full ladder 5, sum will be this, I will call this sum delay or T sum, delay to produce sum after the inputs are applied, after A, B, C is applied delay to get the sum. I will call this T carry, delay to get carry after the inputs are applied. Now, I can put A 0, B 0, T sum, after T sum I get this, after T carry I get this. Now, once this is given, only then this can work, because this full order requires the carry in this carry in comes after T carry from here. So, one T carry delay already, then this is T sum plus T carry, this is I mean this is 2 T carry, this is T C plus T S. Next stage, 2 T C becomes 3 T C, this will become 2 T C plus T S. So, let this n, the delay here will be n T C, this is n minus 1 T C plus T S, this is the delay. So, the output is appearing after n minus 1 T C plus T S sum will come, after n times T C the output carry will come, even assuming T c is to be 1 picosecond, picosecond is 10 power minus 2 seconds. N let us say is 32, so this will come after 32 picoseconds and this will appear as after 31 plus 1 T s, T s may also be 1 picosecond, maybe 1.5 T. So, let us assume T c to be 10 power minus 12 seconds, T s would be 1.5 10 power 12 seconds. So, this is 31 plus 32 picosecond, this is 31, 32.5. Even for 32 bit adder, this now it is very large, it gets accumulated. So, I have to use this adder, see you put a calculator some numbers, keep on punching, as you keep punching you want the results on the display. If a computer is going to take a lot of time to get the results, you will not be interested in doing it in computer. 
the speed. So, the speed at which I can do the addition keeps on increasing the decreasing or the time it takes for completing the addition keeps on increasing if you have more and more stages and I cannot do 4 bit adder is only for an example classroom example or textbook. In textbook if you want to draw a 64 bit how many pages will it take? That is why you use 4 bits. The concept is same, principle is same. It is easy to describe to you. Now, I was able, very easily able to explain to you what a 4 bit adder is, how to convert a 4 bit binary adder into 4 bit BCD adder. All that I was able to do because simple, I can do a truth table is manageable, 16 rows. But in real life, in practical applications, there is going to be a lot more number of bits. This is going to slow down the process. I do not want it. I want faster adders. Today everything is fast. You want to do everything fast. Your internet has to be fast, otherwise you get frustrated. Your cell phone, everything has to be fast. Laptop has to be fast. How do you do that? That means I need to have techniques of reducing the delay or increasing the speed of adders. So, I want faster adders. When we have faster adders, we have faster subtractors because adders and subtractors we know. Adders can be used as subtractors with complement. And we will have faster multipliers, everything will be fast. So, the basic unit, if we increase it, if we improve it, everything becomes faster and faster. How do you do this? There are several, several techniques. So, there are courses, full courses on high speed arithmetic, but we are not going to do all that in this class. We just give you a hint, just one example. There is an adder called, what is the reason for delay? The delay is because the carry has to propagate from stage 1 to stage 2 to 3, 4, 5 to n stage. The carry has to go because there are other numbers are available. A, B is available. If the carry is there, I can get it. A and B is available. If this carry comes, I can get this. So, it is the carry which delays the whole process. It is called carry propagation. Carry propagation takes delay time. This is also called a ripple carry adder. The carry ripples through from stage to stage. It is like a ripple. What is a ripple? It goes slowly from one place to another to another, like that it goes. You throw a stone in the pond. I think I told you the other day. You throw a stone in the pond, then there is a ripple created, that ripple travels and then it becomes wider, wider, wider <coughs> until it reaches the shore. So, it is called ripple carry adder. Ripple carry adders are slow because it takes lot of time for the carry to propagate from the first stage to the last stage. So, now the question is, the solution is already there now. If I can improve the speed at which the carry is generated, if I can do the carry generation faster, then I can have a faster adder. 
So, as I said, there are several, several techniques. Always literature is full of this high speed things because that is why today we are able to have very, very fast computers, calculators, all other electronic gadgets today is very fast because of the constant research that goes on. But I will give you an example only because in this course that is not required to go more than that. So, this adder is called carry liquid head adder. or simply known as CLA, carry look ahead adder. The name is, see sometimes these names are itself enough to understand. Ripple carry you understand, carry ripples, so delay. So, the names have been very nicely appropriately chosen in all these things. Ripple carry means the carry ripples and then it takes time. Now, carry look ahead means if I can predict the carry of each stage beforehand, then I don't have to wait for the carry to come, it is there. So, I look ahead, I see if I can get the carry in advance. If the carry you can think of getting the carry ahead of time before the actual this propagation takes place, I can cut the speed, I mean cut the time or increase the speed. So, I will give a simple example. Let me look at a full adder tooth table one more time. Eighth bit. See that as I said, there are several stages from A 0, 1, 2 up to N. I am going to take an intermediate stage. This I am going to call it A i, B i are the inputs of A and B. S i is the sum, C i minus 1 is input, C i is the output. Just to tell you, it is not necessarily the one, the first or the last. Every stage has the same property. Just to tell you that I am using this. So, so the a i b i can be 0 0, 0 0 1, 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 I am not interested in sum even though the sum is there I am not interested in that I am interested in carry now carry would be I think I missed one, one, okay, sorry. This is carry. Carry of the ith stage are the series of adders, stage i, k i will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. You look at this carry and this, you only look at the carry and the inputs. Now, these two cases There is no carry.
when a and b are both 0, c a may be 1 or 0, c a minus 1 does not matter. Now, in these 4 stages, next 4 rows, if carry is carry input is 0, output carry is 0, carry input is 1, output is 1, input carry is 0, output carry is 0, input carry 1, output carry 1. This happens when either a is 0 and b is 1 or a is 1 and b is 0. So, this is called carry propagate, whatever carry was there before is now reflected in output provided one of the bits a and b is 1, one of the bits a or b is 1 then whatever is the carry input at the here will reflect here. The last two rows when a and b are both 1 carry is 1 whether input carry is 0 or 1, whether input carry is 0 also the carry is 1, input carry is 1 is also the carry. So, this is carry generate. If carry is generated for these two rows, even when it is not there, it gets generated. These four rows carry is propagated with 0, it gets 0, 1, if it is 1, that is under condition A or B is 1 not both. First two conditions there is no carry. So, now I can simplify the whole thing in a mathematical equation. Now, carry output is A exclusive or B, A i, B i and input carry or the carry of any stage is a i exclusive or b i and the previous carry or a and b i. This is the hint for us to proceed further. I know a's and b's always. Since I know all the A's and all the B's at the start, it can be n bit, it can be 15 bits, six, 32 bits, 64, 192, I do not care. I know all the A's and B's. So, you can use this equation to predict the carries in advance. Because if I know this for the first stage, I can use it for the second stage and so forth. So, I will show you how to do that in a quick. So, for any stage, for any stage I know A i B i and C i minus 1 if I know, I can find P i propagation i is A exclusive or B A i B i and G i is A i B i. This is called carry generate, this is called carry propagate. That means the output carry C i is G i plus P i C i minus 1. This is the formula I am going to use. 
Now, let us only look at 4 bits again. So, I have A 0, B 3, B 2, B 1, B 0, I would add these two numbers. I will say C i minus 1 is the C minus 1 is the input carry, normally not there, minus 1 is the first bit, first bit there is no carry usually, unless it is a intermediate stage. Now, I will use this formula, C i is G i P i C i minus 1. Now, what is G i for this first stage? G i G 0 is A 0 B 0, P 0 is A A 0 exclusive or B 0. So, the carry Z 1 would be carry 0 would be carry 0 would be A G 0 plus P 0 C minus 1. I can use it the second stage. C 1 would be G 1 P 1 C 0, but C 0 is already gotten. So, I can expand this into G 1 G 0 P 1, the C 0 is G 0 P 0 C minus 1, P 1 is there. So, P 1 P 0 C minus 1. We will go on writing for C2 and C3. C2 will be G2, P2, C1, which is G2, P2, the C1 is this, G1 plus P1, C0 which is G2 plus P2, G1 plus P1, C0 will be G0 plus P0, C minus 1. If I expand it, it becomes G2 plus P2, G1. P2, P1, G0, P2, P1, P0, C minus 1. And finally, C3. There are only four stages. C3 would be, I will rewrite it now. I do not have to go through all this. This G3, P3, G2 plus P3, P2, G1, P3, P2, P1, G0, P3, P2, P1, P0, C minus 1. So, now I know everything. I know everything. I know all the C's and all the, all the B's and all the C's because G i is nothing but A i B i. P i is nothing but exclusive R B i. All A's and all B's are known. I have A 0, B 0, A 1, B 1, A 2, B 2, A 3, B 2. So, I can com compute Z 0. G1, G2, G3, P0, P1, P0, 
P2, P3. I have used only those. I have not used any carry except the first carry which is known. C minus 1 is the very first carry which is not there usually as I said. Actually, this term will not be there. But assuming it is a intermediate stage, I may still have it. So, I am keeping it. I am keeping it. Since I have all the values of G's and P's and to start with, I can predict C1, C2, C3. So, my carry propagation is simplified. My carry generation is simplified for each stage. So, that means I will have one. So, I calculate first using gates Ai, Bi. I will have four such gates for four such for G0, G1, G2, G3, I will have four such gates. Then we will also calculate P i using exclusive or gates, I will have four such gates for P 0, P 1, P 2. So, I have already used four AND gates, four XR gates. I already cal I can compute them. Then I am going to use a logic in which I will put all these values G3, P3, G2, P2, G1, P1, G0, P0. Where do I get them? From these values from these values of 4 using 4 AND gates and 4 XR gates, I get all these values and I also have C i minus 1. Now, this is the circuit I will use to implement all these. I have 4 equations to implement. I have 1 equation to implement C 0, another to implement C 1 another to implement C 2. <laughs> so, all this will be done here using a logic, I will call it C L A logic. That means, carry look ahead logic. So, carry look ahead logic or carry look ahead circuit, the output of this carry look ahead circuit will be C 3 which is the final carry C 2 C 1 C 0. Once I have them, I can get my sum as what is the sum of a sum is A exclusive or B, A exclusive or B i exclusive or C i minus 1. So, this is A exclusive or B already C. So, this will be P 0 C minus 1 will be my sum 0. P 1, C 0 will be some 1, P 2, C 1 and P 3, C 1, C 2 will be some. So, I have all the 4 terms of sum required for my full adder, but I do not need C 1, C 2, 0. See all this intermediate carries I do not need. In the chain I drew is the final carry that matters. This is the carry which will be the output. So, I will have S 0, S 1, S 2, S 3 and carry out.
Now, the advantage is I do not wait for the carry to propagate, I carry them. I, now, what is the price you pay for it? Anything faster you need to pay money. You do not get anything cheap, you do not get anything free. These Americans say there is no such thing as a free lunch. If somebody invites you for lunch, where that person is going to ask you to do something for you. There is a very a famous American uh, uh, usage, no such thing as a free lunch. So, we cannot get this carry propagation completely eliminated without paying for it. How do we pay? We pay instead of extra hardware. Now, earlier, our 4 bit adder, if you remember, ripple carry, two exclusive odd for some. I need to write somewhere. Four bit carry ripple adder, four bit ripple carry adder. Some will be 2 XRs into 4, 8 XRs. Carry would be 3, 2 input and 1, 3 input R into 3, that means 3 into 4, 12. 2 input and and 4 3 input R. This was the original, this is the requirement 8 exclusive R gates, 12 2 input and gates, 4 3 input R gate to do a 4 bit carry ripple adder hardware. Now, how much hardware here? I already used 4 and gates. Four exclusive R gates. Now, look at this circuit here. For example, if you want to do C3, I need, I am assuming G3, P3, etc. available. I need 2 input AND gate, 3 input AND gate, 4 input AND gate, 5 input AND gate, and all connected to a 5 input R gate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So, just for C3, just for C3 requires uh, 5, 1, 5 input R gate, 1, 2 input R and One, three input and four input and five input and so four gates, but not two input and gates. Two input and gate, three input and gate, four. This is for C three alone. Like that, you can calculate for C two, C one, C zero. Of course, this will be less than this because this is the largest expression. This is smaller than that this is smaller than that. So, it becomes less, but the total amount of hardware in addition to 4 AND gates, 4 exclusive R gates and here again 4 exclusive R gates to get the sum. So, here 4 XR gates, 4 XR gates plus all this plus 8 XR gates and 4 2 input and Already 8 XR has been spent here. 4 in, 2 input and gates out of 12 we have already spent 8 only is remaining, whereas here itself we are taking so much. So, the number, the hardware that is required is enormous. 
which is costly. Of course, cost as I said today, the it is not the cost of the gates that matter because gates are so ex cheap. The IC technology, the manufacturing technology of LSI becomes so advanced, these gates in fact come in, it is very difficult to make one gate. They put a large number of gates and give it to you, it is called gate arrays, we will talk about it later. So, this gate arrays, you can buy 1000 gates, whether you use it or not. But the design effort, the amount of work you have to do in order to get these things, number one. So, one is the hardware cost, which is much more than the hardware cost of a carrier apple. The second thing is, these are all uniform nice gates, two input S, 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 R, two input and three input R. Here I have one gate with five inputs, another with four. 3, 2, next one it will be 4, 3, 2, 1, then it will be 3, 2, 1, etc., etc. Et so, there will be all sorts of non uniform gates. We do not have a, you see, so we can say I want 10 gates to input, it is easy, you can pack them nicely in a circuit board or in an IC design. Whereas, you have 5 input, 4 input, 3 input, all jumbled up, it is not optimum in terms of space, in terms of space utilization. In terms of space utilization, all sorts of jumbled number of inputs is not a good idea to designing VLSI circuits. So, these are the disadvantages, more gates, more money and then non-uniform circuits. This is fewer gates and uniform circuits, but the price is it is too slow and this is very fast. Can I have, now it is only 4 input, CLA, carry look ahead. Can I have 5 inputs, 6 inputs, 7 inputs, 8 inputs, same concept will go on. Suppose I have 8 input, carry look ahead, this already has 5 terms, this if it is a 8th one, this will have 9 terms and this will have 5 input that will have 9 input and there will be 9 terms. So, 9 input R gate and 9 input AND gate, this is not come, there is a problem with all that. We do not want to use such large input gates. We never use very large input gates, we break them into smaller input gates. So, usually up to 4 they do, 4 input CLA, 4 bit CLA is very common. Beyond that, it is not common. Theoretically, you can argue what is wrong. Yes, you can. The number of inputs to the gate becomes so large, number of inputs to the R gate becomes so large, it is not optimum anymore, and the uniformity has told you it becomes even more non uniform and the costs is one thing. So, what they do is usually four inputs CLA, they, even though you have a 16 bit adder. It needs four full, full uh, four bit adders. You can have four four bit triple carry. That is slow. Instead, of what we will do is we will have four CLA adders in ripple mode. That will increase the speed slightly. Or you can go for each of these four CLAs. You can get these C's of them and then put them in another CLA, another four bit CLA. Like that, there are so many methods, I am not going to go into all that. So, this is only to give you a gist of what is meant by speed, why we need to optimize on the speed, because the speed is very important. So, the what we saw as a full adder, easy to understand, but then it is not good enough for high, high speed computation. There are several techniques, this is the introductory technique, CLA is probably the simplest of the, there are so many other techniques which keep coming actually. Okay, I am going to stop now, I am going to unmute. On this course and I want to know the uh, give assignment and the student submitted assignment in hard copy. I want to know uh, how, how we mark the assignment on the Google Drive, just we had submitted or give some marks to the I am not students. hearing you sir, it is not clear what you are saying, it is not clear. Sir, I am asking uh, that you give two assignments in the discussion system design. 
so i am mentor for the course in the bsc engineering college madura our students submitted both assignment in hard copy i want to mark those assignment in the google drive so i want to know is there any defined marks 100 120 or i just put a tick that the particular student submitted the those assignment okay this is right this is admin this is admin question this is an administrative question and you have to send a mail to usha nagarajan usha usha yeah uh, sir yes, sir uh, can, can i answer him sir please, please. Yeah, uh, Mr. Asutosh, please send a mail to nptel at iitm dot ac dot in. And this is not a technical question, but administrative question, as Professor said, and you will be answered promptly. Are there any technical questions? Yeah, there is somebody here. Somebody has a technical question. Sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, sir, is that the non-uniformity in the gate match problem? What problem it will make? Say it again one more slowly. I don't, I'm not hearing you properly. Non non-uniformity in the gate will yeah. make problem. Yeah. What kind of problem it it will make? What is non-uniformity? Suppose I have all two input and gates in my circuit. I design a circuit, anything, not adder. Okay, any circuit I design. They all have same type of gates. That is why we are going for two input NAND gate solution. I told you earlier. I don't know if we joined later. We talked about universal gates, NAND and NOR. Two input NAND and NOR are used universally, so that all of them look alike. So the performance will be same, but the manufacturing process, the packing density. Of the IC, the laying out of the laying out of the paths, all that will become easy if all the gates are identical. This is what I mean by unif non-uniformity. Now, in this type of problem, which is uh, talking about CLA, there is a five input AND gate, there is a four input AND gate, there is a three input AND gate. They cannot be the same size; they'll be slightly different sizes. Even though they are all very very small, this will be different. Running wires and signals from one to the other will also pose a problem. So the packing density decreases, space utilization is not optimum, and that is not a good idea for good IC design. One of the properties of good IC design is modularity; they call it modular. Something like it's a very crude example. I'll give you. Suppose you are going somewhere and you want to pack your suitcase. You will have identical thing like you want to. Nicely pack them in your suitcase. Whereas you have all sorts of jumbled things, you cannot optimally do it. Lot of space will be wasted. At the same time, lot of things will be left outside unpacked. Then your mom has to come and help you. Is it not? That is what I mean by non uniformity. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any other question? Another one. Yeah. Another one. Look at the other is used. Yeah. Here, look at the adder is used. Uh -huh. On the uh, circuit, can I use it? Uh, sub subtract, subtract. Yeah, yeah. Adder and subtract are same for us. I already same talked. Uh, uh, already I can use it. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. See the same four-bit adder subtractor concept. See only the carry no. generation. Nothing is this way. That's all. No. Okay. Any okay. other questions? Also, uh, in the first problem, you said. Uh, we are converting uh, binary to BCD, BCD sum. Yeah. And the uh, calculator, we yes. are uh, calculating two numbers as an and then give the binary result. Uh, as, yes, a, yes, yes. as an example, and that is converted to. Sir, it is not calculator or computer or anything. I will give you an example. We like to deal with decimal numbers. We like to deal with decimal numbers. Whereas the computer only yes. likes to do binary numbers. So, without telling the computer or the calculator that we are doing a decimal addition, we cheat it, we give these two inputs, get the number from 0 to 16, 0 to 15 and put one more thing and add 6 to it. So, that for us it is result is 10 bits, I mean BCD result, without we have two full 4 bit adders, they are only binary adders. 
but by connecting them properly and connecting this that extra signal that is coming from there and adding 6 to it, we are getting what we want without changing at the original design of the 4 bit adder. 4 bit, add, 4 bit adder is available as an IC, I cannot go into it and change it. Outside I can change it to become a BCD adder, that is all. There is nothing to do with uh, whether it is a calculator or a computer, only calculator is an example I told you. We like to deal with decimal numbers. I do not like to calculate, supposing you are, you are giving a calculator and you say you have to feed everything in a binary form, then you have to, it is difficult for you, no? Supposing a decimal number has to be converted to BCD and then fed, I mean decimal number to be converted into binary number to be fed into the calculator, I will throw that calculator, I will not use it. That is what I mean. This is only an example when I said calculator is an example. Yes? Any other question? No more questions? Okay. Thank you very much. See you uh, next Monday.